Open source AI has made massive advancements in the last year and even in the first month of 2024. It's never been easier to run local LLMs, generative AI like Stable Diffusion for both images and video, and even do things like transcribe entire podcasts in minutes. And the question is, how do you do that? And the best tools for this in terms of the cost of compute, in terms of tokens per dollar, I believe is still NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, Apple and AMD are getting really close, but if we're looking at uh, what's going to give you the most options, NVIDIA GPUs are basically it. And the question comes down, well, do you rent them or do you buy them? And for a lot of people, especially people who want to experiment and mix and match with things like merge kits or developers that want to do some more in-depth work, buying your own GPU makes way more sense than renting on a service like RunPod, FastAI, or TensorDoc. And then the question is, which GPU do you buy? And NVIDIA, their messaging is all over the place right now. There are obviously enterprise GPUs that are meant to do very specific things, but are maybe not as general or accessible to most consumers. And they just tag AI onto everything now. And given they've made a lot of releases in the last week, I wanted to kind of condense a lot of this information and show you what's possible now and share it if I think the latest NVIDIA GPUs are really a great deal, whether or not older NVIDIA GPUs really are still a better value. And then for those of you who just have way too much money sitting around, what the uh, farthest you can stretch into enterprise hardware is. And I think you'll be surprised what I found, but stay tuned for that just a bit later. So that's what I wanna go over in this video. We're gonna go over some new models that Nvidia has released, features that are enabled in the newest GPUs, and whether or not the 5090 is actually coming out in 2024. So welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So I should first off start by saying that we're still not really sure when the 5090 is coming. We know that uh, TSMC is building a brand new facility in Japan, unfortunately not in the USA, likely to try to stem uh, how much uh, China is now affecting uh, the future plans for TSMC in Taiwan. And what's also interesting is we know that the whole game of making more AI compute is getting much more competitive and Nvidia clearly cares about AI way more than consumer GPUs. So. The 5090 is probably not coming anytime soon. At the soonest, probably the end of 2024. And I hope I have to eat my words and we see the 5090 before that. But let's get into the latest 40 series GPUs that were released in early January. And what's good is we now know all these features are relatively real and that the GPUs are actually being produced. Nvidia let out a press release in January saying that they released new RTX 40 Super Series. And for those of you who don't know, the, the Super Series is pretty much when Nvidia has piecemeal GPU performance improvements they wanna make to stretch a generation of GPUs out a bit more. So for instance, sometimes we'll have GPUs once every cycle, but usually we see kind of the TIs come out um, a year or two after the initial release of the new generation. So they debut these as new heroes in the gaming and creative universe with AI as their superpower. And of course, Nvidia is pretty fast and loose with the actual specs that come along with this. So they say here that gaming GPUs amplified with more performance and generative AI capabilities starting at $600, which is a curious price point because that's right around where you start looking at uh, what used 3090s or, or 3090 Ti's can be had for. So the question here is what did they release? So they, there's the 4080 Super and the 4070 Super, which they say supercharge the latest games and form the core of AI powered PCs. So they say this latest iteration of NVIDIA Ada Lovelace architecture based GPUs delivers up to 52 shader teraflops, 121 RT teraflops and 836 AI tops. Uh, these are all just units of compute, basically. And the 4070 Super being the cheapest of these starts at $600. And when they say AI powered, most of what they're referring to is DLSS, or one of their new NVIDIA deep learning super sampling technologies, basically saying they can infer pixels to increase resolution without actually having to do more ray tracing. And in their words, they're, they're basically saying with DLSS, seven out of eight pixels can be AI generated, accelerating full ray tracing by up to four times with better image quality, which uh, this this is actually getting pretty good. I don't really play a lot of video games these days, but uh, it is cool to see this getting more common and it basically being capable in games that don't even natively support this. They also say an AI powered leap in PC computing. So they say the new GeForce RTX Super GPUs are the ultimate way to experience AI on PCs. The AI tensor cores deliver up to the same specs they showed before 
and they are really big on NVIDIA Tensor RT, which is actually pretty cool. And NVIDIA has released a lot of fine tunes of models that enable this technology. And what they call this is it's software for high performance deep learning inference, which includes deep learning inference optimizations for the runtime that delivers low latency high throughput for inference applications. So this is mostly focused at LLMs. A lot of the work that NVIDIA has done here is just Windows tooling to make a lot of this stuff work, since most of the development that goes on with a lot of this AI stuff is really on Linux. And again, they mentioned DLSS and a few other kind of clever um, video manipulation things for streamers, um, like removing background noise and doing chroma key in real time, which it's crazy uh, that that's actually just like a common thing that all these cards do now. Now, when they get into what these cards actually are, it's pretty interesting. So they say there's the 4K monster, the 4080 Super, uh, they say here that, that you're getting blistering performance compared to the RTX 4080, and that the RTX 4080 is twice as fast as the RTX 3080 Ti. And the 3080 Ti is really a pretty old GPU at this point, so it's curious that that's the case. And you're getting kind of gouged here because this is a card that they're now selling for basically $1,000. The next is the 4070 Ti Super. They mostly aim this card at gaming. This card still has 16 gigs of memory, so but the bus is basically the same. And they actually compare the performance here to the 3070 Ti, so it's only about 1.6 times faster than a 3070 Ti, uh, curious uh, comparison. And then they show the 4070 Super, where they're saying is 20%, which has 20% more cores than the RTX 4070. Uh, the biggest claim of all these here is claiming that the RTX 4070 is faster than a 3090 at a fraction of the power, which is true but the irony is the price is still the same and RTX 3090s are only gonna get cheaper. And the 3090, if you have two of them within VLink, I would say is still the best value in any GPU available. The thing is, is I think the places to look here, the 4080 Super is an interesting case. It's kind of expensive though. And the 4070 Super is curious, but the question is, is it actually more performant than the 3090 at doing things like LLMs or doing other kind of AI dev tasks. Now you might think, oh, it only has 16 gigs of RAM. You know, how useful could that really be? Why would you even consider recommending a, the card of that caliber? And the reason I say that is we've made a lot of progress in really what I would call more of an art than a science of LLM quantization. And this is basically a set of methods, and there are a lot of different ways you can do this nowadays, where you can adjust the representation of the underlying data sets to take models that in their full form would, would require dozens of GPUs down to something that you can actually fit on a smaller GPU. So for instance, you, you can quantize a, a 70 billion parameter model into something that's actually small enough you can fit on something as small, at least here, as a 3090 or a 4060. And initially the challenge with doing this was that you would actually have significantly lower accuracy and in certain cases have much less capability. But what's kind of cool, um, especially with a lot of work done with Llama 2 and with Hugging Face Transformers, is we can now make these models small enough that they can work on something as small as a 4060, which um, previously, even just three or four months ago, would have been thought as something kind of crazy. And to be fair, these are um, still relatively full implementations of models. These are not models that have been reduced to the point that you can run them on an iPhone or that you can run on MLX or GDUF. And for instance, Miku 70B, which we covered on this channel prior, was actually one of the first that we saw um, be reduced to the point with a method called EXL2 to run on a single 3090, which is pretty cool. And it is important to mention that the process of fine tuning and the process of actually just running inference or training are all separate. And generally inference is the lightest in terms of memory use. However, bandwidth wise, you'll see a different utilization there. And that's why it's sometimes common, again, to bring up risers where you'll see GPUs be just fine in training in kind of a distributed format. Uh, but then when you start to do inference, um, you'll start to have issues because um, it's more bandwidth dependent. And what's really cool with this new uh, AQLM method is they make it small enough to actually just run with five gigs of RAM. And this chart is showing kind of what EXL2 is capable of, and it's pretty crazy. So this is actually looking at Mixtral 8x7b, and in theory, what could be achieved in terms of bits per weight, which you can roughly equate on this side to uh, the requisite amount of RAM you'd need to run these. 
And although you wouldn't be able to run a 34 billion parameter model like Code Llama on something as small as an eight gig uh, GPU, what's pretty cool is with two bit quantization, you could comfortably fit that into a card that has just 12 gigs of VRAM and the 4070 has 16, which is pretty cool. Now, obviously the 3090 has 24 gigs and I still think it's kind of a better option. But if you can't find one or you have to buy a new GPU, I would recommend the 4070 because now with these methods, if you're just doing inference and you're more kind of using models as opposed to actually developing with them, this could be a really great choice. So why is this NVIDIA Tensor RT platform such a big deal? At a high level, this is just an SDK for high performance deep learning inference, which includes a deep learning inference optimizer and runtime that delivers low latency, high throughput for inference applications. And by improving efficiency, sometimes that means it uses a bit less RAM. So it speeds up inference, uh, you can optimize performance, and uh, they also tie this in with some other NVIDIA technology like NVIDIA Triton. So basically it's a bolt-on improvement for CUDA and improves uh, for certain applications ways you would go about deploying these models. And what's pretty cool is, I mean, these are all benchmarks on the H100, obviously, but you can see that with uh, this Tensor RT LLM, you can eke out about an 8x performance boost compared to the A100. Uh, when you're comparing just to the H100, you get about a 2x boost, which is pretty cool. And in theory, this also makes their GPUs a little bit more efficient. But what have they actually shown we can do with this? So what they've shown here is kind of three big models they're really proud of. And this was actually just released a few days ago. So the three that they have enhanced with Tensor RT is Code Llama 70B, which is quite cool. I like this more than GPT-4's coding assistant right now. Cosmos 2, which is, according to NVIDIA, is the largest multi-language language model um, from Microsoft Research. And they have also uh, enabled this with Tensor RT, which is pretty cool. And the other thing that's nice is they've actually built some nice wrappers to actually run this in Windows. So if you don't want to run with Linux, um, I still recommend lear like learning how to use Linux if you really want to develop on this stuff because it's just easier and saves time. But yeah, you can run this on Windows and they have a nice interface for it. So for beginners, this is actually pretty cool. And um, it was also curious that they chose to also uh, enable and sort of implement Tensor RT with Seamless M4T, which is a lesser known meta model, which is also a multimodal foundational model capable of translating speech and text. And um, with really a approach, with really a focus on um, ASR and kind of communication obstacles, which is kind of interesting. So they're pretty proud of the Cosmos interface. Clearly this was, this was meant to be um, demoed and they do show what you can do here, which is pretty cool. So NVIDIA is clearly proud of Tensor RT and it is interesting to see that they're finally kind of dripping this down into consumer cards. For the longest time, a lot of these improvements were heavily restricted to their workstation cards like the A5000 and the A6000. Now, obviously the A8000 now being kind of the flagship of that class of kind of AI developer GPUs. Now we did save the best for last, which is one of the coolest things I've seen. Now to be fair, the first inklings of this model uh, or this way of deploying NVIDIA GPUs I saw about five months ago, but it was really cool to see that the secret really had kind of gotten out on Reddit at least and someone really took it to, it to its logical conclusion or logical end. And by this, I mean people finding clever ways to find cheaper A100 40 and 80 gig GPUs that were actually intended to be used in NVIDIA's own chassis. So these use the SXM4 or SXM5 um, form factor. So there's they're that, that weird chiplet that lets you put like nine of them in one server. And um, people have actually found ways to run up to about I think eight or 10 of them even. And there was a really, really cool Reddit post that I found that showed someone doing this. And the funny thing is they managed to do this, but it was actually so hard to put together and such a hassle that they're actually selling all these. They said it was cool, it worked, and it made about five to $6,000 a month when they rented it on Vast, but that they actually gave up because it was just too much work. And I will say what's funny now, you can actually find these uh, NVIDIA A100 baseboards now on um, eBay. These were previously really hard to find. And unfortunately, since the secret is out with how to actually run A100s outside of NVIDIA hardware like this, 
um, using some really clever engineering from China. It's uh, now actually impossible to find reasonably priced um, A140 gig or 80 gig GPUs in the SXM4 format on eBay. So it's kind of unfortunate that is the way it goes now, but granted I never had like an extra 20 grand to buy four of these. So what's interesting is this user on Reddit, which I'll link this post below, Break It Boris, pretty much um, explains how what, what all he did here. So he said, it took a while, but I finally got everything wired up, powered and connected. So he managed to get five A140 gigs running at 450 watts each uh, with their dedicated um, four port PCIe switch with extenders. Um, Basically, he had this very complicated way of connecting them to a conventional motherboard, which is pretty cool. Uh, each GPU has its own power supply, uh, pulling at about 200 watts uh, at idle, which is kind of crazy. Right. And what's also pretty interesting is GPUs like this, uh, they're really meant to use um, NV Switch, which is a faster version of NV Link that can connect all number of GPUs together. And what's kind of cool is with P2P RDMA, if you have fast enough switching on the PCI Express bus, technically all these GPUs can talk to each other without needing um, physical connections other than PCI Express, which is why a lot of advanced NVIDIA GPUs now don't actually need NVLink. It looks like the biggest thing he ran on this was Goliath 8-bit with GGUF, which he says weirdly outperforms the EXL2 6-bit model. He's not sure if this has to do with how these GPUs are doing transfers, but he did manage to max out this this whole system with uh, 12 tokens a second. And th th to think that you were actually running 12 tokens a second with something this nutty is kind of crazy. Uh, and then again, as I've mentioned, Christian Payne or C-Payne, his risers were used here. A lot of his hardware was used here. And um, there are a lot of these extenders on eBay and AliExpress, but um, the original design came from this guy. And you should definitely buy directly from him if you can. He's the guy who designed this whole thing. So this is what it looked like. So the, the funny thing is uh, these NVIDIA um, heat sinks are actually surprisingly large. And you can see this uh, PCIe switch here. So this is, uh, these two connectors go to an actual motherboard. And then you can see that there are these daughter boards where the SXM4 GPUs are actually connected. And then there's a PCI Express ribbon going from each of those into these, which is kind of interesting. This is another view. You can see it, the, the actual host adapter here, which is pretty cool. And it's another view. So he actually had, um, you know, $40,000 of GPUs and another, you know, I'd say $6,000 of PCI Express switching hardware on what looks to be a bamboo shelf, which is very impressive if I, I don't say so myself. And um, if you're in the market for this much hardware, I don't know if he sold it yet. It's been about two weeks. You can definitely see if uh, he's there and curious, curious about that. So the other funny thing is this is an example of where he bought one of these uh, GPUs. So at one point, this was a wildly cheap way to find these. A lot of A100 SXM4 40 gig um, GPU graphics cards for uh, just 1750 euros, which is pretty crazy. And it looks like these were actually the GPUs themselves, not just the coolers, but he actually had to fix some of the pins which were bent, which, you know, that's kind of a, it's a big risk when you're buying GPUs that are this expensive, especially from China. So we know that this is possible. Uh, if you want to try this, definitely uh, get on Reddit and send Break It Boris a DM. If uh, you guys are planning on buying the 4070 or the 4080 Super, please let me know. I think they're pretty good options. Um, I mostly use 3090s and 4090s. But because of my work, I have kind of a different amount of budget I can use for this, which is uh, pretty cool. You know, it's for work, so I can do that. But uh, yeah, the 3090 is really hard to beat, and it's so affordable on eBay now. Uh, so that's kind of my recommendation. The 4070 is the 4070 Super is also a really good option if you're just going to be doing inference and want to do just enough locally. Um, the 16 gigs of RAM there is fast enough that it really enables a lot. So those are my thoughts there. If you disagree with me, please let me know in the comments. Um, as always, if you learned something or you like this video, um, please like, subscribe, and share. It helps us out a lot, and we'll see you in the next video.